In this video, you will know how to use homogeneous coordinates to represent a transformation. What's the benefit using matrix method? The difference between points and vectors in homogeneous. The 3D intuition on 2D translation. A little bit history of homogeneous coordinates. From the last video, we know transformations like scaling, reflection, shearing, and rotation are not leaving the origin, so it can be seen as applying matrix vector multiplication. We exclude translation from those matrices since it leaves the origin, and therefore we cannot use a 2x2 two two matrix to illustrate it. The answer to this is homogeneous coordinates. Simply put, the object to be transformed bumps up to a 3 vector. The 2x2 two two transformation matrix also bump up to 3x3 three three matrix. In the new 3x3 three three matrix, the top left 2x2 two two components still represent scaling, reflection, shearing, and rotation. What's new is in this part, denotes a translation in X and in Y. You can assume the last row won't change in the context of transformation. We also add a digit to the new vector. Okay, but why does it work? I want to cite Professor Strain's column picture on matrix vector multiplication. The idea is to turn the multiplication to this. In this setup, the last component of the new vector is considered as a switch or a boolean true, saying that like, turn it on or please apply this translation, or a boolean false, saying please don't apply this translation. Oh wait, I might have questions. What's the difference between the 0 and 1? And if this is a 3x3 three three matrix, is it related to 3D problem rather than 2D problem? These two are very good questions. I promise I'll explain later in this video. Let's do a concrete, simple example on translation. The one shifting from origin to 3, 2 on the Gaussian coordinate. Let's first write out the origin, represented in homogeneous coordinate, then our transformation matrix. Since there are no other transformations, the top left 2x2 two two components are just an identity matrix. Since we are moving towards 3, 2, so Tx equal 3 and Ty equal 2. After the multiplication, we got the correct coordinate 3, 2, and we finish our translation. Now you know what is a homogeneous coordinate. Let's continue with the why. Why should we accommodate a 2x2 two two matrix to a 3x3 three three matrix? Why not just sticking to vector addition? It already can illustrate a translation. One of many benefits is composition of transformation. We know that a 2x2 two two matrix multiply a 2x2 two two matrix, resulting a 2x2 two two matrix. If I have a series of 2x2 two two matrix, then I can compress them into one single 2x2 two two matrix. Since transformation can be expressed in matrix, therefore compressing a series of transformation is doable. In computer graphics or game development, most objects are created in the origin. Suppose you are creating an animal fighting game. You hide the animal inside this skewed wall. The panda needs to be scaled twice bigger and take a 0.5 horizontal shear and translate its center and then rotate counterclockwise for 90 degrees. If this is a pipeline, meaning later I want the unicorn to be inside the wall as well, then I can composite these four transformations into one matrix. The transformation to unicorn can be seen as applying to its vertices. Extract an arbitrary vertex as an example. Apply the composite matrix, resulting an updated vertex. Then, we only need to update all the vertices and match. In the era of parallel computing, powered by, for example, CUDA or OpenCL, and etc., the composition of matrices can be parallelized is super meaningful. In two processes or two threads, the left chunk and the right chunk can be calculated in parallel and joining in one matrix synchronously at the end. Okay, now you have a better understanding on what and why. Let me unveil the first question. What's the difference between 0 and 1? The answer to this is 1 refers to a point, 0 refers to a vector. That's interesting. In mathematics, point and vector are rigorously different. A point has position in space. You can tell the difference between points by its x, y value, while vector has magnitude and direction. It has no fixed position in space, which means even though I move a vector from the origin to 3, 2, it is still that vector. Here are four very interesting combinations. We know that a vector can be defined by two points, 
meaning that the end point subtract the start point. Seen in homogeneous coordinates, it also works. See the last digit, 1 minus 1 is 0, meaning a point minus a point is a vector. Another way of creating a vector is that adding two vectors. Seen in homogeneous coordinates, the last digits are 0 plus 0 is still 0, meaning a vector adds a vector is still a vector. How about point adds a vector? That's moving a point along the vector, resulting a new point. Seen in homogeneous coordinates, the last digit is 1 plus 0 is 1, meaning a point plus a vector is a point. Now comes an interesting one, a point plus a point. What is that? Seen algebraically, we have a 2 in the last digit. In order to make it work like others, we have to divide them by 2 and resulting a 1 in the last digit. But what does it mean dividing a 2? It is the midpoint. If dividing 2 is legal, does it mean dividing an arbitrary w is legal? It's related to 3D. Therefore, for the second question, the answer is yes. Now I would like to show you the animation I put a lot of effort. What you're seeing on the screen is translating a square. Or is it? If I zoom out a little bit, it seems like a 3D scene. If I cover the surface, it's a tetrahedron. Or more precisely, I'm sharing that tetrahedron in order to translate the square. Just like the sharing in 2D, imagine there is a cube sitting in the origin. We can notice when the cube is sharing, the x-axis doesn't change. Therefore, the first column of 3x3 three three matrix doesn't change. It's the same as the x-basis vector. So does the y-axis. Therefore, the second column is the same as the y-basis vector. We notice the height of this cube doesn't change. And therefore, the last digit of the third column is 1. And the cube has no y-axis sharing. So the second digit is 0. Now we can interpret the first and the second components of the third column are just moving the z basis vector in the xy plane. Look at this matrix. It's the same matrix of the 2D translation in homogeneous coordinates. That's the point I want to trim in. The homogeneous coordinates is first introduced by Mobius when he was working on projected geometry. Yes, he's the genius who is also famous of the Mobius band. According to Longman Dictionary, Homogeneous refers as consisting of people or things that are of the same type. Well, what is the same in homogeneous coordinates? It's the coordinate. Okay, let me show you what Mobius means. A n-dimension Cartesian coordinate is represented with n plus 1 numbers in homogeneous coordinates. So there are three digits in 2D. A point x, y, w in homogeneous coordinates becomes a point x over w, y over w in Cartesian coordinates. Suppose I have a bunch of points in homogeneous coordinates. It turns out they all refer to 3, 2 in Cartesian coordinates, meaning these points are homogeneous since they represent the same point in Cartesian coordinates. You can imagine the w is the distance to your screen. Even though the surface becomes bigger and bigger, the point on the surface seems relatively not changed. That's the essence of homogeneous. Okay, let's do a summary of this video. You know how to use homogeneous coordinates to represent a transformation. You know the benefits using matrix method, that is composition and performance, etc. You know the difference between points and vectors in homogeneous, the last digit and four combinations. You know the 3D intuition of the translation matrix in 2D. You know the word homogeneous and whom introduced this concept. That's it. I hope it helps. See you around.